Hello and welcome to another episode of Stepping Up, where we explore the world of innovation, creativity and advocacy to aspire to greater and new things. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. Did you know that St. Lucia has the capacity to make prosthetic legs? Did you know that St. Lucia is the only English-speaking Caribbean island who has the capacity to do so? And did you know, and we all know, St. Lucia has sons and daughters of the soil in every corner of the world, well-planted, thriving, and flying our St. Lucia flag high. Well, this week for Link Up, we switch it up a bit and chat with one of our nationals overseas, making us proud. This week, we feature the National Council for and of Persons with Disabilities and the amazing work they continue to do. Murphyllis James has been the president of the NCPD for almost five years. And in this first segment, we have a candid discussion about their work and the national mandate and how the council continues to navigate through these challenging times. Later, we meet one of the technicians who will give me a tour of the lab and shares with us his personal story. Let's take a look. Today, we are in Caroly at the headquarters for the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities. And we are going to have this amazing discussion with the president and Mr. James. Everybody knows Mr. James. He is the person, he's the face for everyone um, right now, especially with the NCPD. And I just want to welcome him and thank you so much for saying yes, yes. to being featured on the show this week. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Let us know a little bit more about the council um, in terms of the history and, you know, the genesis of it all and, you know, the roles that you guys play nationally. I came into this organization about five years ago and what I learned of the history is of one of very rich advocacy. The NCPD was established in 1981. At that time, there was a need in St. Lucia for an umbrella organization to champion the rights of persons with disabilities. Understanding that disability is so diverse, it is not just one category. We represent persons who are blind, persons on the autism spectrum, persons with various physical disabilities. There was a need for an umbrella organization to represent all of these disabilities and to speak on their behalf. So the NCPD came about in 1981 and we are here, continuing the good fight. Continuing the good fight. Yes. Let us know, um, recently you guys received um, support, financial support um, from procedures from the officers, the Prime Minister's Ball. Yes. Let us know how you felt about being selected um, um, to be able to receive those funds and what plans do you guys have in terms of how you're going to use it to continue your mandate? We were very thrilled to be identified as a recipient from the Office of the Prime Minister and not just for any amount, for a significant amount of $25,000. In our organization, where our needs are so diverse, where it's difficult to say that this amount is going to go towards helping persons who are physically challenged or persons with intellectual challenges, it requires us to be very creative to know how we spread this amount to impact the most number of persons with disabilities in St. Lucia. So we have already identify that our prosthetic rehabilitation and repair center which we establish here will be one of the areas that we will be expanding our services to make high quality modern artificial legs even more affordable to St. Lucians. We are going to provide support to farmers with disabilities in sustainable initiatives. We have great respect for agriculture over the past years, we've recognized that many persons with disabilities, especially those who were isolated in rural communities, who were not encouraged to go out, to be educated. What yeah. they had, the resource they had at their disposal was land. So in cases where persons with disabilities have land, agriculture is always an exciting area where they can earn meaningful employment. And has that been something that you guys have advocated about? I guess so, in, the, in terms of the opportunity, farming yes. and access to the land helps yes. and gives them as an opportunity. So do you have any other examples in terms of um, persons with disabilities who have had issues with integrating normally into society? How does the NCPD 
support them and give them avenues for them to be able to work and to make a living. Okay, so in the area of agriculture, it's very exciting that we have our Farmers with Disabilities Beekeeping Association. Okay. This organization came about, that. yes, and you'll learn it now, and it we're <laughs> very excited about this. They're a subsidiary wow. of ours. They came from a, a proposal, a collaboration between the NCPD and the SSDF, nice. where we received funding to empower farmers with the skills required to successfully produce honey and buy products of honey. So they're based in the south, in Balam Bush, and we're very proud of this organization. And we believe in, in development, in always taking things further. So though they were first started as a beekeeping organization and producing mm -hmm. honey and byproducts of honey, they also went into greenhouse farming, into aquaculture. We reached out to other donors to assist in this. So we believe in the beauty, the power of agriculture to empower our people. But also, we know that persons with disabilities over many years, different programs and various proposals were only limited to programs such as handicraft. Having yeah. persons with disabilities do arts and craft and things <laughs> like that to the point that donor agencies are now shunning such proposals. They're yeah. telling you they don't want to see that. They don't yeah. want to see things like, like handicraft yeah. for I guess it's for now projects. time for the, the perception to change. That yes. Is not, that is not the only thing. Exactly. Because we have persons with disabilities as, as a university lecturers, as doctors, as lawyers, as professionals in all walks of life. And we need to highlight this. So our training programs these days are, are get at IT, identifying persons with disabilities who can be trained in and excel in areas such as IT, in mainstream professions. And exciting for us here, especially at this council, is it that we have trained gentlemen who use artificial legs to make artificial legs. Yeah. And this is in keeping with our theme of empowering persons with disabilities to serve persons with disabilities. So as you mentioned it, let's zone into the lab and the prosthetics yes. lab. I, 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 I didn't know we, we had the capacity yes. to do so. And then you see it, you, you, these are the things you see on television in, in terms yes. of series. Um, and you, you hear about it all the time. So I didn't know that we have that capacity here. So what is it that you like to let St. Lucia know about the lab? And you said already that um, the three of them, I've met them before the show, yes. um, they, they have their own legs, but they also engage in making it for other persons. Yes. So let us know a little bit more about that. So I have used an artificial leg from the age of four. And I always had to travel out of St. Lucia to get it done. And even then I had to travel an hour's journey to get to the hospital. So I know the struggle. And when I became president of this organization, I bought this bias or this preference of mine to, to make sure that no young person, no person who is in need of an artificial leg has to go through that struggle, that this is a service we need to offer right here in St. Lucia. So are you saying you were the champion one behind bringing that home? Well, I'm saying that here I have a great team. <laughs> <laughs> I have a great board and understanding staff yeah. who recognize the yeah, need but it was for a this. part of your vision. Well, <laughs> Don't, don't, don't so this is that. where my journey brought me. My yeah. personal struggle and triumph in this area yeah. enabled me to make, make this a success. So we first submitted a proposal to the Australian government in 2015, and we received a grant of about 14,000 EC dollars to start a very modest workshop where we made basic and we advertised it as basic artificial legs and that was in viewfort yeah. what we did recognize is that the minute you begin something and something good other donors will jump on other supporters other corporate sponsors will want to be a part of it and this enabled us to highly upgrade from making basic artificial legs in viewfort to having this modern prosthetic lab right here at our head office in Castries. Nice. How has the government supported your endeavors and where are the areas that they support you? And you can also speak to the ways that you think that you know, we could do a little bit better. So over the past years, government has provided a subvention to our council. We receive a subvention which allows us to pay our staff to rent our office space. But beyond that, there is not anything really left for actual programs on the ground to be able to go out and serve our people and meet their needs on the ground. So we have to reach out to donors and corporate sponsors for this. But we are very grateful for the government subvention. Also, 
concessions, duty-free concessions, are available to persons with disabilities if they want to bring or import or purchase a vehicle, yeah. power chairs, motorized chairs, mobility aids, these are available and persons need to just come for our council and we will write the letters of support and help them greatly in that process. The government recently ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This is an international treaty which identifies and defines the rights of persons with disabilities and it is most significant. It's something our council has been advocating for for many years and recently the St. Lucian government ratified and what does that mean for persons with disabilities? So, for, for us, it means that legislation can now be drafted and passed which enshrines our rights. So there will not be discrimination in the workplace. Yeah. And in, a, in addition to that, in addition to just anti-discrimination, there will be the promotion of the employment for persons with disabilities. Yeah. So it allows for exciting areas for minimum employment quota legislation that businesses of a certain size will be mandated to ensure that a certain percentage of their workforce is qualified persons with disabilities that in terms of our building codes, all buildings must be accessible yeah. to wheelchair users, to persons with visual impairment. Mm -hmm. It's just a, an array of exciting possibilities. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And Thank I'm you. happy for you guys. And, and I guess that's the beginning. And as I was coming to wrap up, my final question is, 10 years from now, as president, and even if you're not president, but you know you still aspire and you have dreams to see your, 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 your companions and your colleagues Yes. What do you think um, the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities, 10 years from now, what will be the ideal vision in St. Lucia? And what, would, what do you think would be, if they had to say that they did their best, yes. that they've achieved it? What is it that you aspire to? So given the diversity of our sector, one of the things that I know is on the national level, we would want to know that there would have been a St. Lucia Disabilities Act. There would be law in St. Lucia which protects persons with disabilities, identifies their rights, protects them from discrimination in the workplace and in all facets of society, that more buildings, more houses, more public buildings would be built to standard which would allow for the ease of access. We realize in the Caribbean, people don't really build for disability. So with houses upon pillars and so many steps, homeowners don't even factor that should they themselves have a stroke or be on a wheelchair, how difficult it would be for them to access their own home. So accessibility is very important for us. Knowing that on the national scene we have boosted our profile, it would be very important that in 10 years that there are active functioning district councils all over St. Lucia so that at the local level our people are organized, they have their functioning district committees where there will be greater communication, collaboration, and gives us a better feel of the needs of our people. We would expect in 10 years that we could boast that more persons with disabilities were employed in all sectors, in a number of sectors, and hopefully that we would even have persons with disabilities as a dominant force in the parliament of St. Lucia. So these are some of our dreams anyone and we want this to be a message to all St. Lucians or anyone who's probably seeing this this show right now assuming that you've lost a leg amputee whatever yes. the reason let us know how the National Council of and for persons with disabilities will assist and let them know what the process would be like so this program of making prosthetic legs available to St. Lucians it is something that we we want our people to fully take advantage of mm -hmm. I have a artificial leg which was made right here so i can attest to the high quality of it and the prices that people pay here are the most reasonable in the region prosthetic legs out of saint lucia would cost tens of thousands of ec dollars for a high quality baloney prosthetic leg our price here is eight thousand five hundred dollars for an above knee it may range from between twelve thousand five hundred to fifteen thousand EC dollars, but bear in mind these are the most reasonable prices. Usually after an amputation is performed, persons need about three to six months of healing time. After which we can then assess them and take their measurements and proceed to making the socket for the prosthetic leg. It's very important in that 
We recently received high quality donations from the UK. This was made possible with our link through the Rotary Club of Grozily. And these high quality donated components allow persons to save thousands of dollars if they go this way with us. It would mean all they have to pay is about 4,000 EC dollars that we make the socket. It is the part of the, the artificial leg that you must push your residual limb into and this cost four thousand ec dollars there's no way of avoiding this it must be custom made for everyone so with the stock of donated components that we have and we've seen clients who receive these and the, these components are worth a lot of money tens of thousands of dollars so to pay four thousand ec dollars and to save tens of thousands, it is a great deal that we encourage St. Lucians to take advantage of. We are happy to serve you. Please contact our council at 4531539 and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you so much for stepping up. Thank you so much for the innovation, the creativity, and the love and the passion and pride as well, Mr. James. And I'm sure anyone who is probably newly amputated or going through any kind of physical trauma yes. know that the NCPD is here to support. Absolutely. So thank, thank you very much. And with that, we'll take our first break. Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. I'm sure you got to understand the work of the NCPD and how their role is so important as they support, empower, and protect the rights of persons with disabilities in our country. The next interview, we meet Francis Felix, and he's a prosthetic limb technician and wears his own prosthetic that he actually made himself right here. The story of the lab is so interesting as all the technicians wear prosthetics themselves. Let's take a look at the interview and the tour of the facility. Welcome back guys and we continue our feature on the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities and as we heard in the previous interview we know that St. Lucia has been producing and creating their own prosthetic legs and I'm here with Mr. Francis Felix and he is one of the technicians here at the headquarters in Carrelly and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what he does and a little bit more about his story. Thank you so much Mr. Felix. I'm Francis Felix. A limb technician, work for NCPD. It's five years since I'm working with NCPD. Mm -hmm. It's nine years since I lost my leg. So I wanted to zone in. Um, let's talk about you. Let's talk about your story. Um, because, you know, he's in very high spirits. And as he told me that he was never depressed or never really sad when he had this accident nine years ago. So tell us a little bit about your story up until now. Well, when I lost my leg nine years ago, it was some kind of way sad to know that you lost a leg as a young man. But eventually, I brought a vision within my own self and to the father. I said, well, I'm not the first or neither the last that, that lost a leg. So I continue moving my life. Eventually, by, as you know, I'm a raster man. Eventually, a vision come to my sight and tell me, well, take this and do that. You'll have a leg and you'll walk did it it was very successful so you did your own thing yeah and not in a lab and not here and not here by so what own. materials did you use i used pull, um the surgical fiberglass from the hospital that uh -huh. they cast your foot when it break mm -hmm. and it was very comfortable <laughs> i did everything the same with it nice and i keep on moving work with ncpd from there we get some support from the church of the latter days the natural, National Trust. Mm -hmm. So they get someone from Indiana to teach me the version of American version mm -hmm. and free other technicians. And now we establish with a workshop at mm -hmm. Kawili here where we do prosthetics, both AK and BK. 10K? AK and BK. What does that mean? 
above knee and below knee oh, amputee. Oh, okay, nice. So, so you're a below knee. Yeah. Okay. And so, so, um, since we're here now, tell me, show me how you get prepared typically on a day, a normal day, in terms of how you you organize your leg. Well, my leg self, it's easy for putting on. It's quite reliance. Like mm -hmm. I have a silicone, I'll just always clean my silicone on the inside. Right. So, so the, the silicone is like a buffer for all the pressure that your weight. Yeah, so okay. it's a very tenderness to avoid any blistering. Yeah. And it's very easy. It's I would like all people with amputees to be like me. Mm -hmm. To have a leg and to be moving about. And, and they could also, and they, they just have to come carefully and check your carefully <laughs> right there. And you can feed them properly. And you guys make it yourselves. Ourselves. So let us know what the process is like. Is there anything that I can do to to today? Mm -hmm. What can I be part of? Like I could say, well, yeah, I made my own prosthetic leg. <laughs> well, you don't have amputee. No. <laughs> but if you could still have an idea, yeah, I'll give you a walk, a tour to the workshop, right. show you the basics that we do. Okay, so before we do the tour, how proud are you to be part of this process? How has the council helped you? Well, I'm very proud, a thousand percent proud of who I am and what I am and what I become now. Mm -hmm. And what do you want St. Lucians to know about the council and persons who use prosthetics? Well, I would like St. Lucians to take that opportunity. We do prosthetics here. Instead of going foreign and having uh, leg to done for them. We get it. We done it there much easier, cheaper, more reliance. And the most important part of it, we that do the prosthetics, we are amputees also. We wear prosthetic legs. That motivates the people a lot when they come and see we have prosthetic and we do not leg for them. Our mobility, we feel in our mobility. We walk with everything freely. So I would like everybody to have that same vibes within themselves. And like you said in the beginning that um, people who, who've lost one leg and you see them crying and they want to die. Don't. Don't give up yourself. You haven't finished life. Life just begun. It's another part. Just praise the Father and ask for strength and then I would like everybody to be happy like me. And yeah. nobody. You look very happy. I need I to take am, a page from your book. I'm proud. <laughs> so you're ready to show me around the lab? Yes, dear. It's All right. pleasure. <laughs> part one of... Do my prosthetics. Plaster of Paris. What's that? Plaster of Paris, the one that you do the cast over your hand. Right, okay. You soak it in water and we take your impression, which okay. is your size mm -hmm. of your leg. So when I wrap it around the leg, it will come out exactly. Like the moon. <laughs> then I filled it with powder of Paris, plaster of Paris. Mm -hmm. So which means the first one will be like this. That's the measurement. And then you cover it with the powder. I fold it okay. with the powder. Okay. It come out like this. Eh? It come out like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now from this, when I do this, a mold, then I'll take a plastic from the oven and I'll burn it and put it over here. Nice. To create a check socket. And that's just one type of... Yeah, part one. Um, this plastic here, eh? you see how thick it, it is? Yeah. You place it in the oven with a hole. This have a hole, so we place it on top of it in the oven. From the oven, we'll take it and place it over there, over the mold. Yeah. We'll dab it in, then we'll have We'll get this out of it. So we'll cut it off. So we'll get rid of that. Yeah. We use this as a check socket. So we'll check it on the person for final correction. Mm -hmm. Any mistake that we have in here, we'll correct it in here mm -hmm. before we do the laminating. Mm -hmm. So this is called a check socket. When we've done this check socket, we have to fold it back again when it's complete to get a mold again. So and we cut it and then we'll go to the laminating room to laminate it okay. to do the carbon fiber. Okay. So this is the compressor. This is our vacuum here to vacuum all oxygen that will be in the mold mm -hmm. to avoid no lump. 
This is our oven where we do our baking of the plastic. Move over to the next room. Here we have the rockman. We do our grinding of the carbon fiber. This is the vacuum for the molding of the laminating. That same mold out here, we place it here. Yeah. That's where we done all the final product of the carbon fiber. We use night glass, flex a stretch. We have the carbon braids. This is the carbon braid. Oh yeah, let me get something there for you. So we'll set all these things on here. Okay. Then we mix our raisins, pour to laminate. Right. The vacuum will vacuum all oxygen will be inside mm -hmm. to keep it safe and sound. Right. And <laughs> let it dry for at least a day. And then you'll have this out of it, a check socket. A check socket. Yeah. And that's just part Carbon one. fiber. <laughs> that's the final part of it here, yeah. then here. Yeah. Then we'll leave and we'll go back to the molding table, mm -hmm. set our pylons, our feet. Then I would ask St. Lucian take advantage of it, of this project here. This is a whole complete AK leg above me with a, a knee which rotates. You do the movement that you need, that when you walk, you could have your freelance nice. stepping. And we are proud to do it for anybody. This one is an AK, and this one is a BK. Mm. So right now, I with a BK standing next to an AK. Mm. And then this one for Brandon, the guy which is inside there. Mm. That's his. Okay. Yeah. So, is there anywhere else in the region who is um, currently making prosthetic legs? No, apart from the French-speaking Martinique country, Saint Lucia is the only one in which we try to reach out the whole Caribbean to assist them mm -hmm. to do prosthetic legs for them yeah. and have people mobile and happy again. Well, guys, you saw it for yourself. Saint Lucia continues to step up and do amazing things. Who would have known that we would have been able to make our own prosthetic legs and support those persons who have become disabled because of accidents or any kind of natural condition or, or, or disease. So thank you so much, guys. And I learned so much about it here today. And I'll take you back to the studio. Thank you. Meeting the team at the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities for me is what I like to call a rich life experience. Jumping into the shoes of someone else, understanding and gaining an appreciation for their daily lived experiences. I'm sure St. Lucians will join me at saying, great job guys, and thank you so much for allowing us to share your work and stories with the world. Now it's time for Link Up. Esther Lee Leeds is a fashion and lifestyle editor from St. Lucia, who has now settled in Cherry Creek after living in San Francisco, New York, and London. She holds a Master of Arts degree in Fashion Journalism from the London College of Fashion and has experience as a journalist, fashion editor, television host, film and television producer. Formerly the senior fashion editor of She Caribbean magazine, Esther worked as a writer and stylist for publications covering fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and entertainment in the Caribbean and the UK. This segment, we have a very exciting person to interview. And for the first time, we're moving away from government, we're moving away from formalities and, you know, all of our governmental persons representing. And we're finally touching base with our diaspora who are doing amazing things, stepping up throughout the COVID and just living their best lives. So without further ado, Esther Lee Leach. Good day. And how are you? I'm great. How are you? Thanks so much for having me on. You know, when you sent me your bio, I think I had to take about two days to like really internalize and take in everything that you've done already. So let's just take it from the top. It's Vibe Central to Cherry Creek Fashion. And of course, you're based in um, Denver, Colorado. And let's just talk about the beginning when you and your sister were ambitious and you all started Vibe Central and talk about the journey to Cherry Creek Fashion today. So Davina and I, my older sister, we always wanted to be Oprah. We were obsessed with her when we were teenagers. 
and we just wanted our own TV show. And we were always planning, writing in our notebooks. And one day we just decided, why don't we create a team show? So we planned and we planned. We looked for advertisers. We looked for content. And like I think two years later, the show was on the air. So we started with Vibe Central and then we went on to Access Caribbean, which was like a travel and tourism show, which was a lot of fun to film because you kind of make up where you want to go and make up what you want to do and then you make it happen. So I was doing that. And at the time, I was also the fashion editor for She Caribbean magazine, May and Rick Wayne. I had a great experience there learning all about photo shoots, being on set, traveling to fashion weeks and that was amazing. So I always mix like the fashion and the TV. So after working with She Caribbean for a while, I wanted to do more and I wanted to learn more. So I decided to go to London to one of the best colleges in the world called University of the Arts London, London College of Fashion, to study fashion journalism. And I was very ambitious. I didn't bother applying for a bachelor's degree. <laughs> I applied for the <laughs> master's program like a because boss. I had all that experience. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why not? I've been doing this for years. I know a lot about the industry already. And then I got in. I had my, my portfolio and I got into the master's program. And it was a fantastic experience learning in London. It really encourages you to be creative and to think outside the box. And I really appreciated and just use my like St. Lucian-ness and my Caribbean-ness to create work in London. So I did that for a while. And then I met my British husband in London. And then I think a year later, we moved to New York, supposedly for three months for his work. But then that turned into two years and then we never left the US. (laughs) So we went from New York to San Francisco and then we decided to move to Denver. Now we call Denver home for the last five years. So when we got to Denver, I took a couple of years off and I had my little son, Hunter, who's now four. And after two years, I said, that's enough. (laughs) He needs to (laughs) go to school (laughs) and I need to get back to work because I love working and I love producing and creating content. So I looked around the market and I decided that it was there was lacking like a magazine covering fashion especially in this area so the area where i live cherry creek it's called like the beverly hills of the midwest it's very fashionable there are loads of stores designer stores restaurants here it's all walkable so i thought this would be a great place to base the magazine and then i can grow it out to different parts of denver so in january 2019 i started my magazine cherry creek fashion magazine And it's a fully digital magazine. I really wanted to be able to make the content dynamic, add video interviews in, and just keep it fresh and modern and moving. So you can find everything at cherrycreekfashion.com. And that's what I've been doing for the last uh, year and a half. And anyone can subscribe and and get to enjoy the content on the magazine. Go on to email and subscribe, or you can just go on cherrycreekfashion.com and read it like the first of every month we have a new issue coming out every month nice on your forbes feature you know forbes <laughs> magazine <laughs> <laughs> yes congratulations on that too doing amazing Thank things so um one of the, the the quotes were community and content are king so what do you yeah. mean by that community and content are king so that's expand like i learned i learned from say lucia that you really have to go into your community find out what's going on, find people to help you. Because you know, when you know people, you can pick up the phone and say, I'm doing this, what do you think? I'm doing this, what do you think? And here I've kind of used the St. Lucian way to build my business. I really hit the ground running when I started. I met lots of people for coffees. So walking on the street now, you know, I stop every every other block talking to a friend, acquaintance, a colleague, because I really went out into the community and met everybody. And for content, it's just creating something valuable and something of good quality that people want to read. You know, a lot, there's a lot of like fast content now, but people are still looking for quality content too. Authentic, uh, authenticity and original stories. And, you know, as you said, another part of it too was that you wanted to capture the small business community and to find that niche, not what everybody was um, capturing. And in one of your podcasts, you mentioned that we're so tired, we're overrun with information about Corona. 
And was it difficult for you having to decide that, well, you know what, we're not going to focus on the corona, we're going to continue full steam ahead? You know, how was that? And how has COVID, you know, adding to that um, question, how has COVID changed your programming? Yes. It was kind of easy for me to decide because I kind of go on, okay, what am I feeling? What do I want to read now? And there was just so much information out there about COVID-19 that I wanted some fantasy again. <laughs> I wanted to open my fashion magazines and see some fashion, have an escape from what was going on, which is what fashion magazines are about. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to continue with my scheduled programming and just continue putting the issues out there and giving people an escape and something pleasant to read and interesting stories to read to keep them entertained at home during this time. And for COVID, like we had, we were shooting less during this time, but I just continue trying to produce the content that I could. Yeah, just stay true to your branding and try not to, to move off anything like that. Um, how do you bring St. Lucia? How do you bring your St. Lucia-ness, your uniqueness to everything that you do? And um, in doing some more research on you, you just launched um, Lee Productions, or is it Cher Cherry Creek Productions, and all of the little things that you continue to do. How has St. Lucia given you that foundation to be doing everything that you're doing today? And how do you continue to blend St. Lucia and bring it into everything that you do today? Well, my success now is because of St. Lucia, because I've grown up there. Like I learned very early on to do a lot myself. So when we did our TV show, I took on multiple roles and that was a good training ground. So now I can set up the lights. I can run the video. I can take the photos because I learned that in St. Lucia. And also it's all about an attitude. Solutions can go anywhere in the world and achieve anything because of our attitude. Like we're so used to talking to anybody anywhere <laughs> on the street <laughs> corner. So I've, I've used that same notion as an attitude here to mm -hmm. talk to anybody. And people seem to like that approach. And they always say that you're so warm and welcoming. And it's because of my upbringing in St. Lucia. It's, it has been invaluable to my success here. Mm -hmm. And that aspect of, you know, we're all... We're all people and we all have stories and it's okay to reach out and say, hi, you okay? And, you know, it's not the same in the United States where, you know, they always talk about, you know, you, don't, you can't go and just ask your neighbor for sugar. And, you know, we have that communal spirit. So I guess, as you say, you've been able to bring it to all aspects of your work. Um, as we wrap up, um, you spoke about a lot in your, in, in your podcast the importance of the intrinsic motivation and the importance of wanting it to get done. Can you just share your message and let anyone who's probably watching this know how they can continue to work and aspire to what they, they, they want to do? And you mentioned that formation was your, <laughs> your song right now and it's your mantra right now. And that has so much to do, especially now. Now more than ever, the mental capacity, the emotional grit that you need to have. And, you know, we could start off in small um, um, spaces, but, you know, we individually have that responsibility to want more and to always want to aspire for more. So if you could just speak to that and share, share with us. I think one thing we have to realize is that we're all so unique and we, ha we all have a story and we all have something to put out there. And if not you, then who is going to bring your story forth, your ideas forth, your content to the world. So you really have to realize that you have to get up and do something. If it means sending an email to somebody, if it means learning a new skill, if it means picking up the phone, it's kind of all up to you to start the ball rolling. And, and once you start it, you realize that other people sort of, you know, come to you and help you along the way. But if you don't do the initial push with your ideas, with your new business, with whatever you want to do, nobody's going to know about it or even know that you need help with it. Do you know what I mean? So you have to kind of push yourself and know, okay, well, it's my job to do it. This is my idea and I'm going to put it forth into the world. And yeah, Beyonce, is, Beyonce and Rihanna are <laughs> 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 my ultimate queens to get motivation for. I'm always editing in my office blasting their music because you know as Beyonce says just work hard and you grind until you own it until you achieve what you want to achieve and visualize it and move for it and go for it well Esteli Leach thank you so much for joining us on Link Up for this segment of Stepping Up 
I'm so happy and I just want to wish you fortune and favors and goodwill and in everything that you do. And I know it's not, it's just the beginning and you're now on that cusp onto anything greater, 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 greater things. So, Thank you so just wrap so up by letting us know me. how we can reach out to you and any yes. messages you have for your family back home. And oh, you know your hi, people. mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I just in time miss your bouillon and your pigtail. <laughs> so people can people can just reach me at cherrycreekfashion.com. My email is there, or you can follow the Instagram at Cherry Creek Fashion or Esther Lee Leach. But hi St. Lucia, I cannot wait to come back sometime this year, hopefully. <laughs> well, we St. Lucia, we're here waiting for you, welcoming you with our warm beaches and our warm weather. And by the grace of God, that'll be very soon. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you so much, Esther. Enjoy the rest of the day and you'll be safe. This week marks our 11th episode and we have covered so many amazing stories. This show for me will forever be etched in my mind as an eye-opener and a humbling experience, meeting persons striving and stepping up despite the odds and challenges. We want to take this time to extend an invitation to anyone in your community or the diaspora who are doing things which are noteworthy, positive, and commendable. Shoot me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next time, and until then, keep stepping up.